the afternoon of the second day of the World Academic Society of Medical Qigong Conference 2019. So the afternoon of the second day was devoted to demonstrations of different Qigong uh, exercises again. And this time, as well as people just purely doing different Qigong exercises, they, um, they also, some of them also talked about and gave a little bit of a, a lecture or introduction about what they were doing as well. So I'm going to play some footage of some of these demonstrations and people talking while I talk um, and I'll talk about some of the few interesting details around what people did. Um, yeah, maybe a few things to, to have a think about. Oh, I will mention and maybe I'll put this one up first just to get it out of the way. I also did my demonstration during this session. So I did some Wuji Qigong. Um, so, you know, here's a little bit of video of me doing that. Um, uh, I won't, you know, I, I won't go too much into that, but I will talk about some, some other general things to do with uh, what was presented uh, during this session. So again, there was a huge variety in what was presented, and in broad brushstrokes, I think something that's really interested about what's been presented at this conference, both yesterday and also today, is that you know, there's everything from standardized sets um, to uh, people who, uh, you know, have a story about a secret book, you know, classic, classic Chinese legend stuff, a secret book that was passed down through the generations and only now they have decided to reveal it. Uh, and uh, people doing uh, maybe not standardized sets, but types of exercises that are very common um, and so well if you're familiar broadly with qigong you'll know about these sets of exercises for example um, the five animal frolics specifically hua to's um, five animal play uh, because there are other five animal plays long white cloud qigong does a different five animal play but um specifically Huato's one, we've had three different groups um, showing uh, Huato's five animal play. And they've all done them quite differently. Um, personally, I liked the one demonstrated today the best. That sort of fits with what I like more. Um, but interesting to see them doing this famous set of exercises differently, making some slightly different claims about it. And no one has a problem with that. Um, I think sometimes, probably some Chinese, but Westerners in particular, they they get they've maybe been exposed to one school or one style, and they think their way is the way. The story they have heard is the story, and nothing else can have any kind of validity. In China, well. Again, maybe probably not for everyone, but if you've if you've really been if you've been around the block, you know you know there are lots of different variations of things, lots of different stories about origins of things and things like that, and that's just how it is, and that's not a problem. It doesn't stop you from enjoying and appreciating and respecting different people doing things in sometimes slightly different ways, sometimes majorly different ways, um, and. I guess it comes with experience, and a lot of people, um, yeah, they, they haven't seen things very broadly. They've only seen a very small amount of practice, um, and, and they, yeah, their, their horizons are limited because of that. Um, so really healthy to look a bit more broadly to, to get a bit of perspective on things, um, Qigong in general, and perhaps on the Qigong that you're doing yourself. Something else that was really interesting is, um, so again, different stories about, or, you know, hidden ancient lineages and being the, you know, the, the last person teaching something and all that sort of thing, standardized sets, and several people, you know, straight up saying, hey, this is some new Qigong I've come up with. 
And again, no one has a problem with that. Um, again, again, I can't speak for everyone in China because the people here are people who are experienced. You know, they're people who have been around the block a few times. Um, and, and they know that coming up with new Qigong forms and sets and exercises is a completely natural thing. It's part of the natural process of evolution and, and it's been happening it's never stopped happening for millennia. It's it's just part of the process, and you know, um, and and so no one no one gasps when someone says, "Oh, this is a new qigong I've come up with." It's like, oh, okay, but they do look at it and see uh, what they think of it, um, and and frankly, some of those who'd come up with new qigong uh, forms or exercises or sets, some of them were a lot more credible than others. Some of them were pretty good, you know, could really see the value in them, and some of them, yeah, not so much. But that's the natural natural process. Um, and so, again, a lot of Westerners often miss that perspective. They, they have this sense of exoticness and of um, everything has to be, you know, ancient. Their idea of ancient can vary a lot of... of seen some people talking about lineages going all the way back 50 years you know <laughs> which isn't all that long uh whereas others you know talking about lineages going back thousands of years um but not an idea of qigong being a living thing that continues to evolve today so there is both the ancient and then also the the recent and then also the brand new and fresh this is part of the process part of the natural process of, well, anything that is a, a, a live practice. So cool to see that um, within the conference, different people practicing new and different things. Let me see if there's anything, so I'm showing you some footage here, see if there's anything particularly interesting for me to comment on. Um, there was, uh, it was quite interesting um, and again, this is one of the new ones that someone had, you know, come up with. It was a new five phases Qigong, so, or five elements. There's different ways to refer to the five elements or five phases. Um, and there was some cool stuff in there. Some cool, you know, and it was great to see how they'd put it together. Um, mm, there was, there was, again, some very different approaches between different things that people did. There's one guy who started with a whole long lecture about virtue and morality before getting into the qigong and that was an int interesting take on things um, i could see where he was coming from but it was an interesting take on things um, there were a couple of people who uh, as part of their demonstrating demonstrated essentially some zhang zhuan practices some standing practices and when I was asked to present a demonstration myself here, you know, I was thinking about, well, what should I present? Um, and going through my mind, well, what would be, what would be interesting? And, and of, of course, as I considered things, I thought, you know, Zhang Zhuan, and kind of pretty much immediately decided, no, that's probably not the most interesting thing to demonstrate for a large crowd of people to you know watch someone just standing there it's different to teach a crowd of people you know because they're engaging it but just for everyone to sit and watch i didn't think that would be very interesting a couple of people went ahead and did just that um but to be fair as well what they also did was they also encouraged some audience participation so not everyone but they had some volunteers come up and they also showed them some Zhang Zhuan at the same time so um, that was an interesting way to do things um, there was some more Tai Chi and there was some Xing Yi uh, which was interesting um, let's see what else uh, and it finished off again with a group doing some uh, some some qigong healing quite a different approach um, to the group from the the previous day um, but interesting to see as well anyway um, this is another little uh, little sample of what went on in the afternoon of the conference um, I hope you've enjoyed it again I can't give you uh, yeah. 
can I do full justice to it? I can give you a little taste, a little taste of what it's like at one of these things, the diversity, the different types of things that you see and can be involved with. Um, but as with everything to really, really, truly grasp it, you probably need to come to one of these conferences yourself at some point. Um, yeah, okay. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.